April 1st, it's Wednesday. Out of Demons Den Underground. Oh, I got it pulled up right here. Okay, and I, I think that sideshow thing is awesome, man, because I like, is it, is it like got a circus vibe to it, or is it just him doing his thing? I mean, yeah, it's a performance for sure. I mean, they get up there and kind of talk, and they joke around, and it's just a lot of fun, you know? He hasn't done very many shows in a long time, and uh, he's been wanting to kind of get back into it and do some stuff. The Pickled Punk Show, is that what it is? Yeah, Pickled Punk Side Show. That's okay. A wacky and somewhat macabre variety show in the spirit of Jim Rose Circus. I don't know what Jim Rose Circus is, but it sounds pretty, hey, correct pretty me awesome. Correct if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys me if I'm wrong, love it. though, but... I think he was uh, one of the clowns out at Nightmare for a while, too. Yeah, he worked with them a lot, doing stuff. See, you know, it's funny, one of the dudes who's behind Nightmare on 19th, when I moved to Lubbock, like, a lot of, I started meeting people from there, and I'm, my name's Stephen Kelly, his name's Stephen Kelly, they all thought I was this dude, like, because I'm tall, long hair, beard, I don't know if he has long hair, but we're friends on Facebook now, I just thought that was really funny, I don't know if y'all are friends with him, y'all been in Lubbock a while. So. Yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely met him, and it's funny, because I saw your name, and for a second I was like, wait a second. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, I, I know all those kids. We, we all kind of, you know, we're all friends with all those guys out there that that do that. I, I work with one of the owners, Corey Trahan. He's opening up uh, opening up another one called Bat City Scaregrounds in Austin. And, uh, you know, we try, we try to work together when we can. I don't, I don't get to do as much stuff with him as, a, you know, I'd like to because he's trying to get into he, – he's got this thing called Horror Web that's a really cool – kind of horror website and, you know, blog and all that stuff. And they're, they're getting into doing some really cool video stuff and some just re- really hilarious stuff. They do a lot of stuff in town with all the different troops of people that do weird shit. So, um, but anyway, yeah, no, we, we know all those cats for I'd sure. I'd like to have him on the show. I think that'd be cool. I've, I've actually never gone to Nightmare on 19th, but I've seen it in Texas monthly. And I mean, I know it's pretty awesome really cool scary stuff i love horror movies and all that i actually i have here in my outline i was gonna ask y'all because santiago reminded me i think in our group chat the other day do y'all have, did y'all ever watch like the crappy sci-fi channel horror movies oh dude i love those <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay, do y'all have like a favorite one of those because i remember back when i was younger like that my parents loved that and so like on the weekends that's all they would watch all saturday from 10 in the morning till like 8 at night is just the sci-fi channel is like a marathon of the like Trimmers 8 you know what I mean like Sharknado 3 took over and became mainstream it was back when it was like Arctic Spiders 2 the freeze over or something like that they had a lot of like ones that were actually produced by sci-fi like that were just really like low budget and campy those were like the, the craziest ones one of my one of my buddies was on one of those actually with the dude from uh, Boondock Saints. <laughs> like it's, it's some it's some uh, the movie was like a, about some giant worm I think that comes out and tries to eat people. I don't even fucking know, but yeah, yeah that's just right. crazy. <laughs> I, man, and I want to say I don't know. I've not seen any of them, but the Sharknado movies. I think those came from the old Sci-Fi Channel days, but. That's one of those movies, like, why? I mean, I guess it's kind of a cool idea, Sharks, Tornado, but just why, man? Because I think they're on the fourth or fifth one. <laughs> they're, like, on by now. They're running out of, like, retired wrestlers and Z-list stars to put in them. <laughs> I think at one point, Tara, uh, Tara Reed like, lost her hand and had, like, a laser sword, kind of like a lightsaber. She was giving off Luke, Luke Skywalker, Return of the Jedi vibes, and she was like the only person that could stop the Sharknado, which is horrible because she'd been in like five of them till that point, which is like, no, she's the last person to stop the Sharknado because it's still around. Right. <laughs> Why does she have like a lightsaber hook? <laughs> they were, I, I think at some point they're just throwing like darts like that uh, robot <laughs> catch where Josh Whedon's just like throwing stupid idea darts at ideas and it's like all right Tara Reed Return of the Jedi Lost Hand lightsaber okay all right, done that yet <laughs> that's so that's ridiculous man that's like I, I've always thought it was funny okay 
Veggie Tales, right? Like some dude back in the day was going to his Christian production, whatever the fuck, office and was like, all right, I've got the best idea of how to teach children about Christ, talking vegetables. And they just went with it instead of making this guy pee in a cup. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Hey, it's because kids don't want to hear that shit and they don't want to eat vegetables. So they like put them together to make, <laughs> to make like the ultimate enemy. Oh my God. Is that, is it subliminal messaging? We've been lied to. Like eat your, it's like Hulk Hogan in the eighties. Eat your vegetables, say your prayers. <laughs> Oh, yeah, on like, Hulk Hogan should have been no, on uh, no. VeggieTales no. as well, like, as their leader or something. He could have been like a papaya with the Fu Manchu and the sunglasses and do-rag, like, oh, yeah, brother, let me tell you something. You know what's better than hanging out with your friends? The power of Christ, brother. Yeah, eat your vegetables, say your prayers, and watch me on WWE SmackDown every Friday at 7.30 on UPN. <laughs> Yeah, it's... Sorry about that. My daughter was locked out of the bathroom. I'm not recording in the bathroom. Either. My house is just built weird. Anyways, I forgot what we were talking about. Sci-fi still? Tara Reid? I can't really think of a... Uh, from that but I do remember, like, uh, back in the old days. I say old days, like, maybe in the 90s, like, record from the TV to our devices, trying to capture some of those sounds, use them in bands and stuff. Man, I remember watching fucking movies go from VHS to DVD, and I thought it was the weirdest thing. Like, I remember growing up playing outside, and nobody does that anymore. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like, like kids, I don't we, even uh, see kids. We have to like we have to beg ours to go out. Her. I saw kids playing outside my yard Friday when I got home from work. I got home kind of early, and there was like a little crowd of kids just riding their bikes going up and down the the block. And I was just like looking at it. And I'm like, what what the hell are they doing? Like, where's and then, your like, hoverboard? Where is your tablet? Looking, and I'm like, are they playing outside and riding their bikes? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? And these kids are like 11 or 12 from the looks of it. And they're just like the neighborhood kids that I've seen. Like when I'm outside, like they'll walk outside or they'll throw the trash. And now they're all like playing. And I'm like, I've lived in this house for like 11, 12 years and like never seen that before till now. I'm like, what the hell's going on? You like drove into a Donnie Darko film or something? <laughs> like, man. I think we should just call the coronavirus the cum flu since it came from China. Every time you say that, I think you're saying the cum flu. No, not the cum flu. The kung flu. I know. The I cum flu? Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think he said cum flu, but I, I, I threw the T-E on there because it sounds funny. <laughs> Anyways, so you've got the show coming up. You've got a tour coming up. You've got the right. album. When was this album released again? You said uh, on Valentine's Day, just about three weeks ago. Oh wow! Okay, so it's just brand new. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Did you did you choose to release it on Valentine's Day or? Well, it was kind of funny. Like we were trying to decide when we were going to release it, just so we could have kind of a promotion schedule, you know, laid out and. I was like, well, let's just, I, I, I said February 15th, and I realized that was a Saturday, and that was a stupid day to release, release a record, so <laughs> I was like, oh, it's going to be on Valentine's Day. How about that in the first place? Yeah, like most yeah. new music gets released on Friday. Do what? Right. I said, like, uh, most new music comes out on Fridays. Yeah, yeah, I mean, totally. It was just like, I missed it by one day. I wasn't even thinking about it. I just recently saw a post, like, right before I got with y'all, that someone was saying, do you think it's become the thing to do now as a musician to, with, like, streaming and all, you know, not many people that I notice or know of buy physical merch. Like, do you think it's a better idea to release an album or to release it as singles? 
and then eventually an album of course but like what do you think gets better results because I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about that recently so well that's i mean that's kind of how even if you're releasing an album like you that's kind of like what we did and that's kind of the model for promoting a record these days is like you give away a single or you give away a of you know music video single and then you know you, you do two or three of those up to the release date and then by the time your actual album comes out like people have heard like half of it already you know so it's kind of like it's like this slow drip kind of way to to get people more interested in what you're doing i guess i don't know it's just it's like it's, it's really perplexing to me too like how, how bands even go about like becoming really successful like I mean, you've got to spend a lot of money or just be, like, really badass, or I don't know. Like... I don't think there's a, a way to pin that, you know what I mean? It's the same with podcasting, it's the same with YouTube, it's the same with anything like that. There's no telling what people are going to like, you know what I mean? Like, my, I see my daughter watch, like, these people just pretty much live in their life on YouTube, and it's, they've been on there for more than a year now, and I don't know how long exactly, but they've gone from, like, a just a little three bedroom, two bathroom apartment to like almost a mansion now just because they're getting paid from YouTube because so many people are watching them just like make slime or like do a dunk tank or something like that. Just not, I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason to it from what I've seen. Well, the problem with with YouTube is this, like a lot of the stuff you're talking about is just originally produced like video content. Like let's say, you know, there's a kid that's like eight years old that reviews toys that made like six, $26 26 million dollars last year or whatever you know there's shit like that going on but when you tie your music up with record labels or like for instance like i can't i mean just because my like i i released this album digitally through through this label um uh, called at the peak which they're super cool and, and and they're real supportive but they're also like they're also owned by this shadowy company that i can't even figure out what it is that owns like every damn record label it's it's called Orchard Music. So, like, when I upload my music videos of the music I wrote, that you know, I, like, I don't remember that being specifically like stated in the contract, but somehow, like, like I'm not allowed to monetize my own songs because of that company. Like, they own the rights to monetization through YouTube for five years. So it's like. I, I put my thing up and I get a copyright infringement thing that says you can't monetize your this music even though it's mine. You know that's that's ridiculous. No, it's crazy. But in order in order to get any kind of exposure or like seem legitimate to anybody, like you know, it, I mean that's that's the only other way to go unless you're some kind of weird like phenomenon like Sturgill Simpson who like I guess he like self released his his first record you know just on Bandcamp, and i don't know how it happened might have just paid some pr motherfucker like five thousand dollars to put him in every magazine or whatever but like he got huge on his first record you know and that's the kind of the kind of stuff i don't really understand like no one there's no one that can explain that to you or like explain how it happens really it's 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 so much more of a crapshoot these days it really, really i took music business in 2011 I think at South Plains and like the book that we had was like released the year before and it was already out of date because of the music industry changes day I mean it all changes day to day it's like but no. it was kind of cutting out for is me. he is he breaking up the L too it, yeah that was breaking up for me I wasn't sure if that was my yeah. hoping that Y'all didn't hear me? No. I, I heard about the book, yeah. and then it started cutting up. Yeah, he said it was out of date by the time it come out. It come out. It came out the year before, but by the time like he got there, it was already out of date. Yeah, because uh, the industry changes that quickly, right? Yeah, that that sounds about right. And, like I went to school for IT a little tiny bit. Uh, I dropped out. Whatever. Um, but that's the same thing. Like their books are updated at least every six months. You know what I mean? Cause I tried to sell mine back and they offered me like three bucks when I paid like a hundred something for it. Yeah. That's just a hell of a racket. It's, cool. it's cause the world's like so much more connected now that everybody has like 
literal computer in the palm of their hands and like you can talk to somebody in Timbuktu and then at the same time.